Hey guys, my name is Rob Trent. I'm a DP based out of Orange County. And today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about my C70 rig. Um, I've been using this camera for like a year and a half. I've used it in a ton of different scenarios. And I think I've finally figured out what the perfect rig is for me. Um, and there's a few things that color these decisions for me. Uh, number one, I use it for a lot of camera operator gigs and a lot of uh, multi-cam things. So that's been a huge use for this camera. And number two is I use it on my Movi Pro a lot as a Movi operator because it has the autofocus, which is really convenient because otherwise you have to have an AC. It's kind of annoying. Um, so, well, it's actually really nice. It's annoying when you can't get one or you don't have the budget to get one. I should clarify that. But um, those are the two things I use it for a lot and those are gonna color the decisions I've made for it. But let's get right into it. So the first thing we should talk about, the basis for the entire build, is the Bright Tangerine cage. So this is a three quarter cage, and I really like that because it allows you to still have a comfortable grip on the right side of the camera, um, which is really nice. I've seen a lot of cages that are fully around, and I still think that'd be super comfortable. Uh, the second thing I really love about it is how thoughtful it is. I mean, they like relocated you uh, a cold shoe. They have a ton of mounting. The top is a NATO rail, which is really great if you want to use a NATO top handle. Um, which I would always recommend because it's so fast and toolless, it's really convenient. And we'll talk about that next. Uh, but it's also just a really solid cage. The inserts of the threads are really nice. You don't have to worry about them being stripped or pulled out. Um, and they have great customer service. If it ever broke or you know something went wrong with it, they're a smaller company, so they're gonna go ahead and get right back to you, which is really, really convenient but it's also just a really solid cage. The inserts of the threads are really nice. You don't have to worry about them being stripped or pulled out. And they have great customer service. If it ever broke or you know something went wrong with it, they're a smaller company, so they're gonna go ahead and get right back to you, which is really, really convenient. So the second thing we should talk about is the top handle, which we just talked about a little bit. I went with the NATO top handle from Small Rig instead of the Bright Tangerine one. It kind of comes as a full kit, um, but I don't really love the Bright Tangerine top handle. It just doesn't fit comfortably in my hand for long periods of time. I'm not sure why. I know a ton of people that love it, but it just wasn't quite my jam. And also the Small Rig one is like 70 bucks, so it's a lot cheaper. Um, but the Small Rig one, I found it on Amazon and I just gave it a test and I've actually loved it. It has like a bit of rubberized grip on the bottom, which is super nice. And of course it's a NATO, um, which makes it toolless and really fast to get it on and off. It also has a airy locating pin 3.8 on the front or 3.8, however you wanna, I don't know. But <laughs> it allows you to have a monitor mount that won't rotate and uh, unscrew that way. And also it gives you a horizon that's level all the time. You know, your monitor's not like a little bit crooked because your screw wasn't quite tight enough. It just alleviates all those issues. And I love having the ability to have that mounted on there really solid. I know Small Rig gets a little bit of a bad rap, but honestly, this top handle's pretty bomb. So I was also surprised, I'm not gonna lie, um, but it's really great and it's like 70 bucks. So that's what I would go with. And that's what I've been using for about a year. So the next thing we should talk about, it's a really small part, but it's also a really important part for me because I always shoot with the monitor and I hate when monitor mounts are janky. Like when they're like wobbling around a little bit or they rotate, I just can't handle it. Or, oh, the worst offender, the magic arm monitor mount. Just buy a monitor mount. Don't, don't use a magic arm, please. Your horizon's gonna be off. Oh, it's so bad. But I got the wooden camera one. Um, it's really great, especially for small HD monitors because they have a different locating than like an Airy 3 locating. They have a different spacing and it's also a quarter 20. So this one's really great. It's um, mounted on a 15 millimeter rod. So I actually have a 15 millimeter rod mount on my Komodo that we're filming on right now. And then I have it on my C70, but I can just transfer without removing the bottom part of the monitor or of the mounting system, which is really nice. So I love that. It's like 80 bucks, but just it's worth it to have a good monitor mount and it will make your life much easier. Number four is the Movi top plate. And I just keep that on there so I can quick change between handheld and the Movi really quickly. All I have to do is take off the top handle and I'm ready to go onto the Movi. But we'll talk about that more later. So number five is the left field plate for the Bright Tangerine cage. And this is a really, really important part of the whole build because it allows you to scale much further with the build. So this is basically a rail carrier that goes on the bottom of your cage and it allows you to have an airy dovetail, which is great because you can have a cheese plate that's airy dovetail and you can go between 
um, a tripod plate and the Movi plate really quickly. You can go on and off of tripods with quick release. It's really great and it's a rail carrier, like I said, so if you wanted to put a V-mount on there, like I have, it allows you to do that with rails. It's really convenient and it also adds a little bit of weight to the bottom of the camera. So I found that it makes the handheld a little bit smoother and it also keeps your horizon a little bit more level because you have gravity helping you out down there. Now, the one thing I'll say about the left field plate is it's something that you can buy later. Don't think that, oh man, I need to buy the entire right tangerine cage together. You can just buy the base kit that's the top plate, the side plate, and the bottom, and it will give you so much versatility on your camera. But when you're ready to run a V-mount and you're ready to do rails and all that stuff, it really is an important part. But just buy it later. Don't let it stop you from buying the rest of the cage because the rest of the cage is like 80% and that left field plate adds another 20 and makes it really, really good that you can scale up. But don't worry about buying the whole thing all at once. So let's talk about power. Power is really important because obviously without it, your camera can't run. And two, it can be a huge clog in the workflow of a set, especially if you're running multiple cameras. So this is all colored by, I always run a monitor. I always do. As soon as I got a monitor, I realized how nice it is to have one, but I also hate having to run like NPFs or anything like that. I like to run a DTAP to a power cable for the monitor. So like right now, I'm running a DTAP to a little Limo right here that powers the monitor. Some people also run a DTAP to NPF. I've ran that before. I have multiple. They're really nice to have around, but basically I'm trying to eliminate as many battery types as I can. And we'll continue to talk about this, but I need a DTAP. So my favorite option for handheld and tripod work is to run a V-mount. So basically this is coming off the left field plate. It's just two rails. And then I have a V-mount plate on the back. And this allows me to run DTAP power to the camera and to all my accessories and use a battery type that's accepted in the entire industry. It's the same as gold mount, V mount, you know, whatever circle you're working in, it's nice to have a consolidated battery type. So basically I can walk onto a set and know that I can just chuck a V mount on there. I know other cameras are using V mounts. It eliminates like, oh, I'm using BPA and I don't have a V mount plate. Okay, well, we're out of BPAs. Can you, oh, you can't use a V mount. Okay, crap, we have to figure this out. And oh man, I, I need MPFs. Well, can't you just run a DTAP to it? Oh no, I, I don't have that type of battery. And it's like, oh man, I really wish we could consolidate to one battery so you can help each other out. Everybody has a charger. Um, you know, everybody can use each other's batteries. It makes things really, really convenient. And it will make that workflow faster of getting a battery before you need to shoot, etc. It's really nice to have. It also adds a little bit more weight to the camera. And it also, unfortunately, looks better for client perception when the camera's a little bit bigger. I really hate to say it, but it's kind of true. So the second option is a core C98 battery. And I really like these because it gives you a bit of a smaller um, package size, but also allows you to have a DTAP and a USB out, which is really nice because you can still run the monitor off a of DTAP. Um, I've had to like randomly use the USB power delivery, honestly, pretty often because some things just, you need a USB, like if you wanna use um, an HDMI to SDI converter, then you need to use that USB out, which is really, really convenient. Um, but I will say it's not a standardized battery, so it's still only gonna work for the Canon cameras that are taking BPAs. Um, and they can be a little bit finicky on their quality control, but I've had three now, and they've all worked really well for me. And they're not gonna last quite as long as the like real OEM Canon batteries, but they give you a DTAP, they give you a USB, and they work really well. It allows you to have a monitor that's running off a single battery type, um, and you don't have to break the bank doing the whole V-mount system. Um, personally, I use them on the Movi all the time. It's a nice little counterweight coming out the back of the camera, and it still keeps that small size if you're doing running and stuff. For a long time, I just had two C98s, and I had the BPA30, and I had a few MPFs for my monitor. And what I would do is I would basically have a C98 and I would run my monitor and my C70 off of it. And then when it got, you know, two thirds of the way done, I would switch it out for the other C98 and put that one on charge. So in the time where that other one was running, that other one was charging and they have a similar charge and discharge rate with 
you know, like a C70 and a Shinobi 7 is what I was using it with at the time. And I could basically just run off two batteries all day as long as I had the ability to have one on the charger when I was using the other. So that's a really great option if you're a little bit more limited on budget, but you still wanna be able to run a monitor without having to also invest in NPF batteries. So like I've kind of mentioned throughout the video, I really like to use the C70 on the Movi. And a big part of that is being in crunch time on a set and they go, oh no, we wanna do the Movi on this shot. So you have to go from uh, a fully built rig like this to on a gimbal and you know, as quick as possible. And a lot of the parts I've invested in allow me to get there really quickly. So say I was fully built up like this, what I would do is I would take the top handle off and then I would have the left field plate on it. I would use the airy dovetail, I'd release it, take off the MPF plate, put on the Movi plate and take out the V-mount and then put in a little, you know, core battery or, or just the BPA-30, whatever it is. But it basically allowed me to be toolless and get to the Movi really quickly. That's why the top plate's on there. That's why I like the left field adapter or the left field plate to give me the dovetail for the Movi plate. And honestly, it's just a really, really quick way to get there that's all toolless, very efficient, and that makes my life less stressful and it also makes the production happier because they're getting onto camera support much faster. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. These parts have really done a great job for me. They've made my life a lot easier, made my life a lot less stressful, honestly, um, which is kind of crazy to say that a cage can make your life less stressful, but it really does because I have confidence in it. I have confidence in the camera package that I'll be okay to mount anything to it, kind of adapt to any scenario, and it's just made things a lot easier. So I hope you learned something. I hope this rig maybe worked for you or gave you some inspiration on a, uh, the route you wanna go. But if it did, great. If not, if you have more questions, let me know, um, either in the comments or DM me on Instagram, whatever. I'll get to it as soon as possible. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.